A little fun fact I tell everyone about Skylines. R32 GTRs specifically are way smaller in person than you'd expect. I don't know, at least specifically for me, when I was dreaming and fanboying over all of them, looking at plenty of Instagram and Google images of these cars all the time, they're advertised as the mighty Godzilla and things look a lot bigger in photos than in real life. But they are in fact a 90s Japanese car, which, you know, all older Japanese cars are much smaller than current day cars. And it is in fact a pretty tiny vehicle for what you'd expect. Just something that you guys could keep in mind if you've never seen one in person before or just taken that in. Obviously, I'm parked a little bit out of ways to protect my diffuser, but there's just, you know, your average crossover and uh, it's it's got a lot of room inside the spot. Good morning, everybody. Today, we have a couple things on the agenda that involve... Mm, that car. I know you guys think I forget about this thing and I know you always want to see more content on it. And today I have some news to showcase to you guys. One of which is that this car is actually getting transported down for a specific YouTube show of something. And you guys will see more about that later. But for now, because that's happening, I must prepare it. And one of the things that we need to do is get it aligned. This video is sponsored by Bespoke. Post. What is Bespoke Post, you ask? Well, Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that delivers box of awesome goods that are top shelf from under the radar brands. It is entirely free to join, and every month they introduce their members cool new products like outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. Each box of awesome has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. And 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Now, one of the best things about their club is that you only pay for what you want. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you each month, completely based on a quiz that you take at the very beginning. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what's inside the box and you get to decide if you want to keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. Now, I have received three lovely boxes from them and I'm gonna showcase you guys what is in each one. Box number one, we have the park. The park is a high quality camping chair that simply, you can never have enough camping chairs just cause if you have enough friends, they're always gonna want a place to sit. And here's what she looks like, all complete. Can you believe that whole chair fits in this tiny little pocket bag? Box number two, we have the chill. I love how each of the box names gives clear hints to what each item is. This clearly is a nice little cooling bag. When you head out to the beach, you put all your nice little sodas, whatever you wanna keep cold, all in here. My favorite part is, comes with a bottle opener. The last box, number three, is called the Hibernate, and I'll give you guys some time to guess what it would be. They are once again what they sound like. They are comfy shoes that you can just completely fall asleep in. Oh yeah, we are totally lounging. So what are you guys waiting for? If you want some awesome goodies like me, go click the link of the description at the top of this video. You could go to bespokepost.com slash JUM20, or you can use the promo code during checkout JUM20, and you will receive 20% off your first box of awesome. I kid you not, I'm just gonna keep on wearing these around the house from now on. These are actually so comfortable. <laughs> Now for those of you that are just getting in the cars, if you alter or upgrade any car suspension components like coilovers, arms, tie rods, add camber, do any of that, you guys need to get an alignment. I express this because it is something that I discovered a lot later than I feel like I should have. Obviously that was a while back, but still, when it comes to being in the modified car scene, it is a place that you will find yourself pretty often and I think it's important that everyone knows about it. This car specifically, I swapped out a tie rod end recently and I tried to eyeball it to literally have the exact same threads as the previous one that was in there. But at the end of the day, eyeballing will only be so close in comparison to the laser alignment equipment that they have when you go to a professional place. So that's why we're going to one right now and you guys will see how it's done. Well, I always think 
about like Skylines is like the 32 being it's being more of a like a lightweight boxer like a featherweight boxer yeah and it's like super nimble and small you know just it it has the ability to like carve up roads opposed to like like a 34 gtr mm -hmm. which is like heavyweight boxer you know oh and then, yeah, and then yeah now you have the 35 right that that one's like super heavyweight you know exactly so as far as like gtrs go this is like my favorite yeah it's it's just got like such a timeless classy design it does its it does. proportions are just very simple there's a lot of people that don't do them justice yeah you know, it's it's real easy to real easy to mess it up too it's like, crazy. Yeah, the amount that you'll just see like come out of ports and stuff just looking so wonky not a not a like it's like a crappy wheel choice yeah you know it's like there's there's like so much to it it's it's nutty in the alignment system they actually have a skyline yo and they have all the series so you can align an r30 chassis yep. <laughs> that's pretty cool with this system. hey look at that wow and they have all the different types of 32s Autec, as well they got er bnr that's that's you right there yeah that yep. is so cool that's right there you go that's that's your factory all your factory specs which is cool like and and then that's the thing is like you can go you can go factory spec or you can go whatever you want really yeah like if you want because this is like factory it gives you almost a degree of negative camber so if you wanted to run more camber you can add on yeah. top of that and this is where we're like modified cars it doesn't really matter yeah. like it's whatever you want it to be get it calibrated yeah it's a little rolling compensation yep this is for now so it's it's all a little jacked up Here we even are. though it's red it's it's basically telling you that it's not within factory spec but if you want to have two and a half degrees nobody's stopping you right yeah, yeah, yeah so you can have whatever you want a lot of this is just we're gonna we're gonna mess around with the car and just dial in whatever you need to so we'll do a caster measurement and then uh we'll go from there this is where i absolutely despise skyline stuff <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be messing with caster and camber all at once. Yeah, man, these things are so different, man. So different. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you knew, but like, uh, for instance, like the 34, the chassis is completely different, and the 32 chassis completely different than the GTR to a GTS, GTST or whatever. Oh, really? The subframe because the front axles it has then, different pickup points for a subframe the subframe looks completely different it's because it's got to fit the front diff and front diff yeah. and axles but on a non-gtr car all like pretty much a rear, -wheel, like a rear, -wheel, drive yeah, car, rear wheel drive it's it's like a s chassis in the front because oh. that that chassis is an s s14 s15 chassis essentially yeah because uh, the rear is all s14 and like the rear of this is i believe it's pretty much all s like s13 okay but then the front is completely different. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's just a cool piece of engineering. <laughs> How is it even? <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. Your, your toe is like way off. On the, this is yeah. like way inward. Basically your left front wheel is like that. Yeah. And then your right front is like this. So it's gotcha. steering to the right. So your wheel is most likely you're compensating yeah, and yeah. you're like this, you're yep. driving it to the left. But also having your cross camber at negative 0.6, your left front wheel is tipped more than the right front yeah so it's going to naturally want to push the car that way the only way to combat that is to actually tow in the right front a little more yeah. so basically they'll they'll this one will be pushing the car this way but your camera is going to be wanting to walk it over this way but we'll we'll finagle we'll with that so i'll, I'll i kind of want to fix that too is all straight car is all now aligned we're able to get the camber adjusted we're able to get the toe fixed which that was the major issue now sadly we weren't able to get the toe fixed in time i already basically wore through a bunch of the tires when you drive with toe being completely unaligned it will wear your tires out more than camber will more than anything that you can imagine so these nexons on the inside are already almost showing cord we're gonna be right back here installing some new uh advan tires on this thing as for now i'm gonna go give it a little test run and see how she drives improved oh yeah she's pretty straight now it does tram line so if you do kind of yeah you could see it does want to 
go off in the one direction. So the fact that you guys just saw my car clearly just want to steer itself on a straight road, you might immediately be assuming that uh, it's not aligned whatsoever. Now, tram lining is a different issue, not really related or solvable directly by your alignment. More so can have to do with your tires. Tram lining is basically when your car just wants to follow the grooves of the pavement and your steering wheel moves with that. So obviously this pavement is not perfectly flat. If all roads were, then tram lining wouldn't be an issue. It's got different grooves that want to go in different directions. My current tires want to follow that, mainly because they are like 200 tread wear, more race car oriented tires that are pretty thick too. The thicker the tire, the more you'll run into that issue, especially because the track width of my car overall is actually pretty thin because Skylines, even though the GTRs have wider fenders, they're still pretty thin cars overall. So like my Camaro, for example, runs super thick, more race car oriented tires, but it doesn't tram line anywhere near as much just because it's track width overall. The gap between the width of each wheel on either end of the car is much greater because it's, it's just a bigger, wider car than a Skyline GTR is. The last thing that could have an effect on it is also just your tires tread and how it's shaped or how little tread there is on it. So uh, we're gonna be putting different tires on. We'll see if that makes any difference with the tram lining. So we got the Advan AO52s going on the Advan R6s. You want to explain to us why these are extremely annoying wheels to uh, mount? Well, <laughs> tires on. As you can see on those, they have a fat lip, and there's two type, two ways wheels get mounted: either face side down, or basically you'll have the face side up. Right now, we're mounting them face side down. That's the easiest way to remove like a tire off of a big lift wheel. Because so, of just that right there? Just drop center. Yep. Yeah. And so you go about it the other way. Yeah. Some wheels, unfortunately, don't have this, and you do have to struggle with getting the tire over this, which is cool. huge, annoyance. <laughs> huge annoyance. And most of the time, most of the time, unfortunately, you won't be able to get them off. In some instances, you have to cut things off, but very, very rarely. Very yeah. Rarely. Like, this, this thing will be a little grip monster. Yeah, we'll see how easy goes all right all right that's pretty easy now we just need to find our there's a little yellow mark on the tire that you try to line up with the valve stem it's right uh -huh. down here oh yeah yeah, yeah right there. you try to get as close to the valve stems as you can wow that's all she wrote. <laughs> that actually was a lot easier than I expected. Yep. Now we just gotta freaking fill it with air and yep. boom. Ooh, baby, there is nothing like fresh rubber. And this is the first time I've had the Advan on the Advans. You already know, only the best for this thing. And of course, we've had that sticker there just to represent for the wheels, but now the car is complete Yokohama fitted. Thanks to Nikolai's alignment, we have the perfect track setup. Just a little bit of track camber in the front, but basically nothing in the rear. Just so I don't really wear out these tires and uh, we get maximum rear grip possible. I can safely say that with a better alignment, it definitely improves tram lining to one direction, but with these better tires, it definitely also improves how the car wants to follow the pavement of the road. Already these Advans feel like they don't have a mind of their own, which is good because it feels like I have the full precise control of where I'm going in this car. You guys can note, if you guys are having tram line issues, make sure you have an alignment and good tires. So we just got my Hennessy Exorcist done. Now there's a couple other cool American tuner legends out there. One of which that has completely made my childhood was a Celine S281. And here's one right in front of me. It's got some red sparkle up in there. And then you fitted newer Mustang mirrors onto the side, which now that you mentioned that I could totally see, but yet they also flow so well. Man, this is cool. I never see them in red. I had a torch red regular GT. It was my first car I had bought. It was just kind of, I saw this come up and I was like, it's kind of brings back memories of my old car. So 
that's why I just I was like I had to get it. Yeah, you can always tell the signature S281s by the reduced taillights. The overall arrow is subtly more aggressive, but it's cool. I mean, it's like it brings me back to uh, Barricade in the first Transformers movie, just a bunch of other places. These things ruled the early 2000s. One very last thing I'm gonna do to the car is top it off with a fresh oil change. We got ourselves the good stuff, HKS oil filter, as well as the nice Motul oil that we're gonna put in this thing. Only the good stuff for it from here on out because we gotta keep it alive. Would you look at that? So there is gonna be the home for this car for the next week. Now, funny enough, most of the times when I have trailers come pick up my car for shipping, they can go right up to my house because they have little scouts that go pick it up with smaller trailers I could get into my neighborhood. But this transport logistics company is just straight up putting this thing in the big dog right there and he can't get into my neighborhood that's why we are at some safeway parking lot right now and uh we're gonna get this skyline loaded up so i'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering why am i transporting my car and i don't know how much of it i can share right now but all i will say is that it is going down for a shoot of some sort involving a youtube video it's going to be high production value and obviously they are willing to transport my car all the way down to southern california for this that's all you guys need to know and i'll plan on vlogging the behind the scenes and what goes on down there once that all takes place. Good thing this thing isn't super slammed because gotta make it up that shallow ramp. <laughs> this is the most interesting trailer contraption I've seen. He is able to literally move the rails that I'm on inside the trailer of where I'm sitting because obviously I'm still poking out a little bit. We are moving in. Did you leave the key inside? Yeah. Back up, hold it. Yeah, the hatch is getting lowered down and she is tucked up right on the edge, but uh, I can only hope it'll be safe. Oh, and look at this. Here's my Uber to take me back home. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. For Jack. an outing here in uh, Seattle. <laughs>